Several top Ukrainian officials, including the deputy head of the presidential office, resign amid a damaging corruption scandal. The former deputy head of Ukraine's presidential office, Kirill Timoshenko, holding up his handwritten resignation letter. He's one of several top officials who've resigned after President Vladimir Zelensky pledged to launch a government shakeup amid allegations of high-level corruption. Deputy Defense Minister Vyacheslav Shapovalov also quit following allegations that he oversaw the buying of food for soldiers at inflated prices. And Zelensky has cracked down on travel. This applies to all officials of the central government and some other levels of local government. This applies to law enforcement officers, people, elected officials, prosecutors, and all those who have to work for the state and in the state. If they want to rest now, they will rest outside the state service. Officials will no longer be able to travel abroad for vacations or for any other non-governmental purpose. Other high-profile resignations include the Deputy Prosecutor General, several regional governors and heads of government agencies. Meanwhile, operatives of Ukraine's anti-corruption agencies have stopped an organized crime group for embezzling budget funds and arrested the Deputy Minister of Development while receiving a bribe. The Polish Defense Minister announced that he had asked Germany to agree to send Leopard tanks to Ukraine. In Berlin, NATO chief Jens Stoltenberg reiterated the importance of providing more heavy weapons to Kyiv to help repel Russian forces. German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius pointed out that the decision on these deliveries depended on the Chancellor. The question of the Leopard tanks, there is no new information yet. I have always said that I expect a decision to be made shortly, and I still assume that. I have strongly encouraged partner countries that have Leopard tanks that are operational to start training Ukrainian forces on those tanks already. If you put all of this together, uh, the German announcements, uh, the announcements from other allies of a wide range of different types of armor to Ukraine, this is a huge additional uh, contribution to the combat capabilities of uh, Ukraine. And this is urgent, this is important, uh, because Russia is preparing for new offensives. The Kremlin warned deliveries to Kiev of German-made Leopard tanks would not bring about anything good for the German-Russian relationship. The fear of a military escalation with Moscow and the reluctance of Berlin to assume a leadership role in the Western camp has led Germany to hesitate about sending weapons demanded by Kyiv. At least seven more people have been killed in another mass shooting incident in California. Officials said they died in related attacks on workers at two agricultural facilities in the coastal community of Half Moon Bay, south of San Francisco. Police in San Mateo County say they arrested 67-year-old Chun-Li Zhao, who they suspect of carrying out the killings at both sites. They said a weapon was found in his vehicle and they believe he acted alone. One of the ten people injured in a mass shooting at a dance studio in Monterey Park in California at the weekend has died, bringing the number of dead to 11. As police continue with their investigation, they say they've discovered items of interest after a search of the 72-year-old suspect's residence. Afternoon, we recovered one 308 caliber rifle, numerous electronic devices such as cell phones, computers, etc. Items that lead us to believe the suspect was manufacturing homemade firearm suppressors. From the Monterey Park scene, where the victims were assassinated. Investigators recovered a total of 42 shell casings and a large capacity magazine. It's still unclear exactly what Who Can Trans motive was for the killings, but California Governor Gavin Newsom said America is not dealing with the issue of guns. But respectfully, I will submit that regardless, um, of the challenges it relates to behavioral health. There's not a country in the world that doesn't experience behavioral health issues. It's not unique to the United States, quite the contrary. What's unique is these large capacity magazine clips. 
that will take down every single one of you in a matter of seconds. It's just weapons of pure mass destruction. And the fact that that is not being addressed in this country is comical. It's disgraceful. It's offensive to the senses, to common sense, to dignity. And on Tuesday, reports were coming in of another shooting in the state, this time in Mateo County. Local media were reporting seven deaths. War in space is inching closer, with attacks and cyber attacks on satellites increasing, something the EU's top diplomat says is a serious cause for concern. Speaking at the opening of the European Space Conference in Brussels on Tuesday, Joseph Borrell said that one of those attacks was a clear sign at the start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. 24 hours before Moscow invaded, the space telecommunication network used by the Ukrainian army was targeted by a cyber attack. And the malicious code used managed to bring down parts of the network. El espacio se ha convertido en un... Space has become a strategic area. I won't say a battlefield, but a place where satellites are or can be targeted. We are critically dependent on information that is received or bounced back from satellites. Most of our civilian and military infrastructure depends on the satellite system. According to Beret, there are 5,500 satellites currently in orbit, with around 10% used by the world's military. And space is now defined as a key area by the world's largest military alliance, NATO. Risks could also come from the physical destruction of satellites. Russia recently destroyed one of its satellites with a ground launch missile. If it did it to one of its own satellites, it can do it to any other satellite tomorrow. So, we have to be concerned about the safety of what we put up in space. And this also brings with it other dangers. The destruction of a satellite fills space with small metallic particles. They are little, but at the speed at which they go, they are tremendously dangerous. The European Commission will present a new space initiative in March, which aims to guarantee security both for people and for the continent's critical infrastructure. Christopher Pitchers, Euronews, Brussels. Waving the red and white high and proud, Denmark has won this year's Baku Store, the most prestigious gastronomic competition in the world, perhaps better known to some as the Culinary Olympics. Held in France's food capital, Denmark succeeded the very country that prides itself most on its cuisine, and 22 other nations to reach the podium. For us, Jeff, this is the biggest, definitely. There's nothing higher. This is a uh, represent uh, Paul Bocuse, but also uh, the respect that we got for each other in the, uh, yeah, for chefs all over the world. And uh, it's so f***ing amazing. Each country has five hours and 30 minutes to express their creativity and show their technique through two tests. The first is Feed the Kids, which aims to highlight the importance of nutrition for children's health. And the second, creating a hot dish for 15 people with monkfish and king scallops. Most of the team have been preparing for uh, almost two years now. And, uh, you know, it's about working together as a team. It's about um, being the best uh, with, with the, the, your plates, uh, having the best practice, having the best behavior, and showcasing your whole culture. It's not just about cooking, it's showcasing your culture. It's a fantastic experience to just be here, first of all, but to, to judge the teams, 24 teams, and of course to judge Norway as well is a, is a great pleasure. And, uh, it's always hard. You're, you're sometimes tougher to your own people, you know. <laughs> Norway, one of the big favourites, finished in second place. This is Denmark's third trophy in the competition, created in 1987, named after the world-famous chef and Lyon's claim to fame, Paul Bocuse. The Bocuse Door 2023 has just given its verdict in an extremely competitive competition. 
which shows that cooking and haute gastronomy are now global phenomena, with audiences coming from all over the world to defend the national colors and flavors of their respective chefs.